Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a bit of a different approach and talk about how to render Toon Style characters in Omniverse. As always, you want to make sure that you're familiar with the basics of iClone and Omniverse here, so be sure you've watched our Getting Started tutorial first, which covers the basic workflow of how to export from iClone and render in Omniverse. On the screen now we have a Toon Style character called Megan that uses a PBR shader type. The first thing we want to do is convert all of the materials to the digital human shader. You can do this by using the Convert icon at the top of the material list and selecting it from there. After the conversion is finished, you'll see that there are now some additional options for adjusting the subsurface scattering below the material list. One of those is subsurface scattering radius, which is used to adjust the surface light transmission. A higher value here can sort of soften the skin and make it seem more radiant. If you select the eye materials with digital human shader assigned, you can also adjust things like the sclera, which is the white area around the iris. You can tweak the cornea and subsurface scattering radius here as well. Let's go ahead and export the character as a USD file so we can import her into Omniverse. She's the only thing in our project, so select all for export at the top. The most important thing to remember when exporting with a digital human shader is to choose RTX Path Traced mode, which is the only mode that is compatible with subsurface scattering. Since the character is animated for the entire project length, we want to choose all frames from the export range. There are more export details in our tutorial that deal specifically with exporting. Once that's done, let's take a look at tweaking and refining the materials of the character in Omniverse to achieve the colorful and energetic appearance that we want. In Omniverse, we can simply double-click our character's USD file to bring it into the scene. As you can see, the materials and animation have imported in flawlessly, but let's take a look at the edits we can make in Omniverse. Let's start off by disabling all the lights from the Stage tab, and then selecting an IBL map from the Omniverse library. Doing this can give you a great lighting environment foundation right away, and you can rotate the IBL map to get different results. To learn more about advanced lighting in Omniverse, please check out that specific tutorial. You'll notice that there is a great deal of noise in the viewport since we're in path traced mode. To minimize this, you can go into the path tracing section of your render settings and enable denoising. In order to tweak our character's skin material, we'll want to go down into the looks folder in stage and multi-select all of the skin surfaces for the head and the body. Subsurface scattering is going to be important here, which you can find in the subsurface area lower down in the property tab. You can notice that if we tweak the weight or toggle it on and off, that there is a notable difference in the softness and energy of the skin due to the simulation of light transmission. These values are all mapped identically from iClone to Omniverse to easily consolidate the effect. You can adjust the deeper levels of light transmission and the color tinge of the skin by modifying both the radius and color values here as well. I'm using a strong green here to demonstrate a more easily noticeable example. Once you have the values you like, you can then go and rotate and adjust the IBL map in order to see the results of your changes from different light angles. If I switch out the IBL map for other ones in the library, you'll also notice how the subsurface scattering performs under different basic IBL lighting scenarios. Once you've found the one you like, you can also tweak the intensity for a stronger effect as well. Okay, that's basic IBL lighting, let's take a look at a more detailed lighting scenario. Since Omniverse uses a real ray tracing system, light bouncing is an important aspect to consider when lighting your scene. What I've done here in iClone is add a plane prop that is part of the Light Studio content pack and is used specifically for light bouncing scenarios. Let's just export it as a simple prop background to USD format. We can just export the selected item at the current frame without IBL in this case. Back in Omniverse, we can deselect the Visible in Primary Array checkbox in order to hide the IBL map for now. We can then click and drag in the Background Plane USD and zero out the World Position to get it in place. Now we can use the 3-point lighting setup which you saw earlier that we exported from iClone to enhance the project's visuals. Let's start by activating the lights once more. We'll start with the back or rim light which is generally placed behind the character at an angle to accentuate the side of the character's head. In this case, due to the bouncing light, it's a bit too bright, 
so we need to go into the Property tab to lower the intensity and make it softer. The same thing goes with the key or front light, which is generally placed in front of the character at an angle to create an even light towards the face. You can also create your own custom lights in Omniverse as well. Here, we're creating a rectangular light from the Create menu. Once I position it in place, it can be used as a sort of secondary rim light or fill light with the purpose of lighting up the other side of the face to generate the contrast area along the left side of her head. Finally, we can create a sphere light, which in this case I'll place directly in front of her face after decreasing the radius significantly. The goal here is to generate a nice specular reflection on her eyes, which brings them to life as opposed to having them flat without reflections. When you're finally ready to render, you can add some finishing touches by adjusting the color correction values in the post processing section. These will be fairly consistent with your standard color correction values in other software, but it's important not to go too crazy on them, otherwise you can easily turn your warm and energetic looking character into a dark and gloomy one. That's about it for this tutorial guys, thanks for watching and please make sure to check out our other Omniverse tutorials and our forums at forum.reillusion.com and I'll see you in the next video.